Welcome back to the Gusky. I am Gray, and today we are going to get started on our second full season here at ACLU. Um, it's been a long, 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 long time since I obviously uh, uploaded an episode of this. It's been a long time since I've played this specifically. I have been playing Football Manager on my own, and quite honestly, um, I've come a long way. I think we've kind of stumbled on our best, uh, our best formation to date, and it's going to be this one, our uh, four two three one zero. Um, I went and played around with some of these um, player instructions. I would rather call them position instructions because the instructions I have uh, pertain to the person in that position, whoever the hell it is, any yeah, any player. You can specify these for specific players when you make them, but they're all just, you know, they're all just what they are. So um, with that being said, um, I've had really nice results with this formation since I've been kind of tinkering with it. And um, like I said, it is where it is now, and that's fantastic. Um, I just got done playing, uh, being in the group stage on my Galway United uh, career and um, the group stage of the Champions League. I completely missed that, but whatever. Um, and we did not surrender a single goal. Now, obviously, results will be a little different for us as a lower league club. Um, and obviously, we don't have nearly as much talent, but, but... Um, things should work out pretty well. Um, I do have some other things that are kind of revolutionary, really. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll get into that as we get into the game. So, let's go ahead and do that, shall we? Um, now, uh, let's see, yeah, um, the future's really bright. I mean, quite honestly, like I said, I have a lot of hope for this. For this formation, um, you know, hopefully we can we can make some real progress in this first season here in the Irish Premier Division. But anyway, um, I do have a new uh, whatever you want to call it. As you can see, actually, what I do need to do. So I am going to go through and do. Um, I want staff responsibilities first team. I want you to do that. Let you go ahead and do that. Confirm that shit. All right. I do have a new um layout, a new um skin. It took me some long. Oh, it took me a long time to find one. And actually, I kind of almost, almost killed my computer doing so because I've downloaded one. It was an exe file, and you know, downloaded all sorts of bullshit on my computer. And I had to, I had to spend quite a bit of effort to go and um, go and clean all that shit out. So that. Partly contributed to um, to the downtime between this uh, this episode and the last episode of Football Manager. So, um, we'll just go with that. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Um, but yeah, I like this skin a lot. Um, it's the best one that I've found. Um, it, it's pretty simple. It just kind of changes things a little bit. It's, it's I'm still not quite used to where everything is on this, but I mean I like to kind of I like the little title bar and all that shit. It's real neat. But anyway, um, things I've found out about the game. Um, I've found out that quite honestly, when it comes to signing players in Football Manager, at least 14. I'm not so sure about 15. But um, it 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 just. It, it all depends on the money you have. Um, basically, if you have money to buy a player, and you know that that'll that'll ooh, if you have money to buy a player, that'll pretty much guarantee. Um, you know, obviously you have to have at least some sort of cash, and you have to have to be on a contract that you can afford. But you know, you gotta have you know a little bit of that. But I mean, it's just it's really as long as you have the cash to sign a player, they're pretty much gonna sign for you regardless of your reputation. Which is interesting, because I was playing, I picked up another club on my Galway United career. Um, and it's an Icelandic club. And they're in the second tier of Icelandic football. And their, 
their reputation is probably like two, three thousand, somewhere around in there. I haven't checked. But basically what happened was they had some money stashed away. I convinced them to go pro. And we had they gave me about two million. So I was able to pay the high price for some of the players that I wanted to get my hands on. And these are players with um, potentials of about 150, something like that, 140. Um, however, I was able to sign one Belarusian player who's um, comparable to my Galway United in terms of talent potential and all that shit. He's comparable to my Galway United team and... I mean, like I said, and I signed them from a team that was had higher reputation. Um, if I remember right, on FM12, um, players would just, I mean, they'd just flat out, you know, reject your contract offer if you, if your club had lesser, oof, that was scary, if your club had lesser um, reputation than the club that they're currently on had that happen quite a bit so I mean so really building reputation was the best way to go in terms of you know trying to be able to sign players and it was the main factor in determining what players were available to you and what players would sign for you not so much in this game it, there's a bit more power in having the money to sign a player to, 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 to afford their asking price or the club's asking price and then of course you know you have to have at least some sort of money you know to to sign him now obviously you're not able to sign a player like that plays for let's just for example Manchester United if they're on a contract where they cost you know 20,000 a week or whatever you can't sign them if you if you can't afford their wages now obviously you have to be able to offer something better so obviously if you if you look for players that are a little bit you know that are around your your financial you know around your um uh, that'll fit into your checkbook, really. Best way to say that, I guess. If you can find players that are going to be able to, you know, that, that are going to be on affordable contracts. You know, we're talking guys that are, depending on just where you are at. Um, with my Icelandic club, I mean, they're. I think our wage budget now is twenty-one thousand. Um, a week. So I mean, contracts really. What we're looking for is like no more. Like the max wage we can offer someone is like two thousand. So, if if you're if you're able to sign a player or a player hat is is on a contract that's lesser than that, chances are pretty good that you can sign the player and afford them. Um, and quite honestly, my director of football was giving me some pretty good prices on some of these players. At first, I was like, oh Jesus, these kids are coming in for you know thirteen hundred a week, but also ooh. That was, that was close. Well, so I was signing players from pretty well established footballing countries, and they were coming at pretty high prices to begin with um, into the team. Some of them cheap, but they won't, don't have the um, didn't have the um, of the African players uh, available to them um, because of the rules in the uh, in the league. They only allow for like three non-EU players, um, which also I found out through the course of this because I'm like okay so I gotta keep tags on tags keep tags on who's uh, a European Union member on that save file and I did not know this but countries can join the European Union throughout the course of the game totally fucking cool honestly I was so like wow holy shit so some countries that obviously aren't aren't EU uh, countries as of today you know in the real world are, are uh, still a part of uh, our EU when you're, you know, 15, 20 years down the road. Which, like I said, is really cool. Really cool. I mean, it makes, makes the game way more dynamic. I, I was unaware that that was actually a possibility. I didn't even look into it, and I kind of stumbled across that information. Ooh, shit. That was frightening. But anyway. Um, that's kind of where, where we're at. So, uh, yeah. Uh rule of thumb if you get the money the club invests money in 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 you then you know you're you're in a pretty good place so um all right we were calm <sighs> mm. I'm gonna be a little bit of a dickhead
because they can. So, like I said, it's all about it's all about the money. It makes things interesting because it's it's easier then to go get money. And if if you feel like cheating and going and just adding money to your club, that'll go a long way too. I mean, if if you go and you have a oh fuck, what's it called? Um, like a real time editor, or or you bought the one from because uh, they have one now on uh, on Steam, like FM Football Manager Sports Interactive or whatever the fuck it's called. Has their own um, supported uh, um, editor, which is actually not bad. It, it's it's okay. It doesn't quite possess the search functions of the real time editor, and they don't allow you to change kits or anything like that. They might on F and fifteen. I can't remember. But that would be the only real reason that I would really want, other than scouting, other than other than seeing you know who's really that good, because that's that's something. Because quite honestly, there's nothing more irritating than buying a player that's like got tons of potential but it never works out because he doesn't have the professionalism to get there. Ugh, that sucks. That sucks. It really sucks. Can't say that enough. But anyway, focusing on this now. Um, you can see, Jesus. I mean, there's just all sorts of all sorts of attacking intent from from our midfield now. Like I said, I I kind of opened up. The, the player roles. I didn't quite pause on them for very long and, and tell you what I did to them, but basically I allowed these guys in the central area. Um, I gave them more defensive duties and I opened up their passing ability um, a little bit more um, so that now they close down a little bit more, and I think that helps defensively a lot. It helps slow the ball down in midfield so, th so they're not just standing around. Really? Okay, it's, it's just a wasn't a foul. It's like really, there's a foul there. He cleared him on the ball. But anyway, um, and more and more, I have played a little bit of FM15 in my time. And my God, their animations are so wonky. So wonky, just so weird, so fucking weird. But anyhow, um, oh fucking Christ, seriously. Hmm. All right then. All right. So who should we substitute? We don't have any. Um. Ah, oh, we can change. We can change. Hurrah! That's what we'll do. We'll drop Haglum, who I think uh, is going to be a little bit better suited in this system. I think now. I think he's going to be a little bit more at home. In all honesty, I think he's. I think we've got a nice a nice formation for him. And we'll take Robbie out of there. I don't like. I'm gonna mo remove the players with the cards because I'm just I'm just gonna play it soft. Seemed oh wow I've never seen that before. All right. Well I guess I uh, guess I'll stay away from that. I was just gonna be like hey man no pressure dude no pressure bro. I don't know. But uh, like I said, I mean, we're going to see a lot of, um, oh, also, after using this formation, my, uh, my, I'm not going to say striker, but my lead attacking threat, the attacking midfielder, which is Oyala's position, um, I guess I should use this, right? This is pretty much a nice little visual that I have up here, and I put this up here for that exact purpose. This guy, um, you know, he, he, uh. He scored 50 goals for me in all competitions this last season using this formation, so I'm pretty excited. Um, I don't expect, obviously, to score 50 goals. That's the first time I've scored, had a player score 50 goals. I mean, he smashed his old record of, like, 41 or 43, something like that this year. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to expect that every day for obvious reasons, but, um, you know, it's, there's... Some nice attacking intent. I mean, like, like, we still. One thing I like about this too is we still. Um, oh my. That's a free kick. That's awfully close to being. Uh, I, I don't know. That was awfully close to being a penalty. But anyhow, um, we're just this. It, we we do outnumber the defensive line. Yes. Nice. 
We do outnumber the defensive line like we do with our other formation, our uh, 4 one 2 3 zero, which we'll still hold on to, but like I said, I'm really impressed with the way this formation worked against better sides. Um, also on that going United career, have another club in Norway, Viking FK, and um, there they had a really good season. They actually progressed with very, not, I'm not going to say very bad players, but I mean, they're, they're, they're very, very talented. I use them to kind of pick up the scraps that um, I didn't have room for on my Galway United squad and really picked up some halfway decent players with them. And um, their their player uh, their player their current potent or uh, current ability is what it's called is hovering around like 100 120 somewhere around in there and they progressed through the group stage of the Champions League in a group that consisted of Barcelona, Anderlecht, and Shakhtar Donetsk, which all of those clubs should be better than than them in terms of current ability should be. Um, I didn't really check, quite honestly, but, I mean, it's that's, that's the way it is. So I was very impressed, like I said, at how it performed. I mean, we, we managed a 4-4 draw at home against Barcelona. Of course, we got smashed on the return leg and needed some help from Anderlecht. Or was it? No, Shakhtar. We got some help from Shakhtar um, to progress to the, the, through the uh, group stage because they had to actually beat, um, they had to beat Anderlecht. So... Pretty exciting stuff, like I said. I mean, it's it's really, really nice. I'm really hoping that this will push us through um, our first season here and give us a you know, give us a top half finish. I think we can we can snag a top half finish if we um, if we if we uh, play pretty well. Like I said, I think we've got the talent, and I think this formation really helps us out a lot. It doesn't really expose us. A lot and in, in a lot of ways and quite honestly I, I think you know when it comes to looking at the defensive oh boy oh that was that was going to be cute if he scored off of that I think defensively I think it, it really does a good job of shoring up I mean if you look at their if you look at their shots they've got six shots I mean it's you know decent amount of shots in the Champions League with Galway United I mean we were we weren't even allowing any of the clubs to, to shoot, you know, much more than three, four shots a game. I mean, we were really stifling them. I mean, like I said, they're a really good squad that I have, and we really didn't have the strongest group. I mean, the only club that I can remember right now is Leon that we had in that group. And I know there were other clubs, and it wasn't really that bad of a group. But, I mean, like I said, you you just you can just see where, you know, where the counterattacking and the movement is in midfield. I mean, we had, oh. I mean, we had a lot of a lot of good shit going on. I mean, we we do a good job of compacting midfield and, and defending well, but when we attack, because of the the roles that everyone's playing and the um, uh, player instructions that we've attached now, I mean, there's a lot a lot of venom in here once we get the ball because there's a lot of uh, a lot of ways that we can outnumber people, outnumber the defensive line at least I should say, as long as we you know defend halfway decent and like I said I mean we, we do a pretty good job I, I think only when we're completely I'm not going to say completely only when we're um, clearly matched overmatched in terms of talent I think we'll struggle I think um, as long as there's parity in we're you know in and around the same same talent level as all the clubs that we're playing here in, in, the, in the Finnish Premier Division I, I think we'll do all right Ooh, that should have been a goal. He had a clear, clear, clear header there. But, um, I mean, like I said, I think we're going to create a good number of chances, too. I mean, it's, a lot of it's going to come down to, you know, motivation and shit like that. And that's going to be obviously on me to, to make sure we, we, we maintain our, uh, our uh, high level of performance. Because, like I said, I mean, with the two defensive, defen defensive, defensive midfielders, I mean, it really helps a lot. I, mean, I think it really does. I mean, we got, you know, and then we've got all that attacking intent, and even the, the other defensive midfielder right there. I don't know if you noticed, but he's that. That's a. Uh, wait, who is that? That's not Harala. 
Oh, that was Os L. Haral I will cut inside. Not not on the outside. That was oh, Ose. But um I mean even with, you know, the the defensive midfielders, these guys will even join in the attack sometimes in the final third, which is nice. Yeah, it it does a good job of kind of ooh. This formation does a good job of kind of contributing to all phases of play. Which is nice. Which is what you want. You really need all eleven players. I should say at least all 10 players, all 10 outfield players to contribute to, you know, defending and attacking. It's really what you want. You don't really want to be outnumbered in any phase of the game. Of course, obviously, you know, these these defenders back here don't really don't really help out too much in attack and and the um the the fullbacks will you know, are there more in a support role as they've always been with my formations, which I prefer. I don't like using them as the main main avenue of attack. So I mean, like even like you look at our team ratings. I mean, I think our team ratings are pretty good. Our player ratings are pretty good for you know only being a one goal game. I mean, usually you have like the one goal scorer have a decent rating, and everyone else not so much. And this will allow us to nice and there it is. And um, this will allow us to have. This will allow us, I think, to help cover for our defensive frailties, I think. I think. It's just my 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 opinion, my hope. Like I said, this that's just judging on the performance against really good teams at, you know, the highest level of European football in the UEFA Champions League. So like I said, big hopes. Big hopes for the upcoming season. So that's our first game. Our first game under our belts here. Or our first Finnish Premier Division. Finnish Premier League, sorry. Division. I always want to use the word division for some reason. Um, so, yeah. And we are three points to the good so far. Although, truth be told, I think these three teams are going to be the ones that will give us the most trouble. I think FC Lati, when I looked at them... They've had a pretty stacked squad. FC Inter isn't terrible either. Um, Mariam, we've already played them a few times. We actually beat them too. So, I mean, having tinkered with the formation and now being a little bit better, you know, like I said, is you know, we're going to create a lot of chances this year. And I think defensively we'll be able to, to, you know, just defend better and hopefully win more of these 1-1 one -one or one nothing games when we need to. So... Anyway, alright, so that does it for this episode. You made this one on YouTube, you know what to do. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.